my way to go pick up a little Grizzly CNC a milling machine. It's about uh, an hour and a half from my house uh, to this location. So uh, anyway, I thought I'd do a little video of buying this thing. Uh, buying used machinery is something that I do often. Uh, I like to buy and resell machinery so I can buy more tools. So uh, yeah, I just think it's, it's kind of interesting. A lot of people you know, mention that I'm always buying something or um, selling something, but that's how I get my extra money for uh, you know, buying a $200 tool holder or uh, one of those, you know, Heimer 3D Taster um, probes. Um, I think that was like 400 bucks or something. Um, all this stuff's expensive, but if you can find a way to earn the money, uh, and it doesn't come out of your family's money. So for me, you know, I've got a family, and um, I don't make money really machining, so. Um, in order for me to justify all this, I, I basically have to come up with the money on my own. So all the money I spend is all cash and it's all um, generated off of buying and selling. So um, yeah, that's kind of the name of the game for me. Some people, you know, aren't into that haggling and um, everything, but that's how uh, that's how this all got started for me. And uh, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the the whole process of meeting the new people um, because generally speaking if you go to somebody's house and you're buying a CNC machine you and that person probably have some similarities and if nothing else it's usually a good conversation um, and you've got one more you know contact out there and, um, I think it's kind of neat ironically when I uh, meet up with people that I buy machinery from we uh, oftentimes keep in touch through either emails or text messages and uh, share projects that we're making and subscribe to each other's YouTube channels and stuff like that. So anyway, I just thought that's kind of an interesting uh, uh, subject. Some people uh, might not uh, be into that, but I, I love I love every bit of, bit of this and uh, thought maybe I could talk over the purchase of this machine with you guys to help you out. Uh, perhaps you're not sure what to look for, uh, but before I made this trip, I, you know, I basically um, asked a lot of questions about the build process. Um, I asked, asked the obvious things I want to know about this uh, little grizzly machine. You know, whether it had the ball screw conversion, um, did it have a spindle bearing upgrade? Uh, was it a homemade conversion or was it a kit bought um, by somebody? And you know these types of things. What type of uh, motors are driving it? Are they servo or are they steppers? Um, that and also uh, what size the motors are. So um, are they 274 ounce stepper motors? Because if they are, uh, that's not quite enough uh, to do any you know or decent machining um, with any type of feed rate. So uh, yeah, those are the types of things to find out whether I thought it was good value. Then I negotiated the price down before I even showed up. So I'm not meeting this guy face to face and you got that awkward time where you're like, okay, I know you're asking for a thousand, but can I get it for a thousand bucks? That type of thing. So all my negotiating was done before I even showed up. Um, now if the machine uh, turns out to be a complete turd, well, <laughs> then that would change. But um, as described, um, I've, I've uh, come to an agreement on what I'll pay for it if it is in the condition that we discussed. So uh, that kind of gets that out of the way. It also lets you know how much money you need to bring so you're not bringing uh, more money than necessary. And uh, that's always nice when you're trying to explain to your wife how much money you're taking. Um, and uh, they're, they're always interested in that. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at this machine. I'll, I'll get that out of the next clip. Okay, while well, I'm on my way back uh, from picking up this machine, uh, got got it for a good deal. Uh, the dude was super cool. Uh, he had a nice little shop going, and he actually had a Tormach 1100 uh, CNC machine uh, in there, and that's why he was getting rid of this, because he didn't need it, and it was just taking up space. So, um, yeah, he also threw in a, a three-axis digital probe which is cool, um, wasn't expecting that. So that's a couple hundred bucks value. 
and uh, be curious to put that thing to work and test that out. So anyway, cool trip, glad I made it. The machine's in good shape. It has just a little bit of uh, surface rust on the top of the table and uh, where the vise was sitting, there's a little bit of rust under that. Um, we'll clean that up with some Scotch-Brite and maybe some WD-40 or something at the house and uh, hopefully get this thing up and making some chips real soon. So, anyway, yeah, just thought I'd uh, share. Um, I've never really had a bad trip um, when going to buy something like this, so, um, yeah, if you're if you're on the edge of whether you should buy used or not, I would always buy used if you can find something for a decent deal. I mean, you think about all the time it takes to convert one of these machines, that's a lot of time spent. Um, Granted, you can do it yourself, and if you're a perfectionist, you're always going to be able to pick it apart. But you can always buy one of these machines that someone else converted, and then um, make the little changes on it that you want. Um, and uh, and you know you can use the machine to create those parts. So as long as you buy something that's functional, um, you know you can use that thing to prototype your own customized parts for your conversion and do it the way you want. And uh, yeah, at least you'd have a machine that's working, so right on. All right, got it to the house. Here's a sneak peek at what I'm up to. I painted this uh, base and then made a cart for the bottom. Well, I've got most of this uh, base finished. Notice that the uh, wheels are a little bit recessed so they don't stand off the ground so much. And then they, uh, they have just enough clearance to get past these standoffs. These are adjustable so um, you can get them off of those casters. And then, uh, yeah. So I just tacked a nut onto a piece of one inch tubing and yeah you'll see what's up once i put this together okay so i've got these um these three eighths bolts here welded um on the bottom here so all you have to do is take the stand and set it on top i also have these standoffs down enough to where the wheels are slightly off the ground um but i guess for now i could bring them yeah whatever so i'll show you how easy it's going to be to get this thing lined up that's that and then simply put your uh, washers on there and your nuts and you're set I'm not sure why I'm showing you this part I think it's pretty self-explanatory but um, Put those guys on, a couple nuts on that sucker, and you're in business. Yeah, I like this. Um, the stance is going to be more stable. Um, these machines, once you're done putting all these different CNC uh, options on there, you know way more so uh, when you've got stuff shifting back and forth and all that they're going to inherently um, be less stable and this base is not very wide so this really helps out okay now it's time to uh, get this thing figured out it came with the controllers and all that in a pelican case which is pretty cool uh, case is a little large for my liking uh, so I'm going to go ahead and condense this down into a smaller footprint for my small garage. But um, there's quite a bit of extra cable here, which is fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shorten that all up and um, try to uh, just make this a little more compact. So anyway, uh, this is before I'm in the process now of 
you know, doing all this other stuff. Um, before I even offloaded it from the truck, I wanted to get it a little more, um, I don't know, in a permanent placing. So, yeah, we'll see. This is the little stand. Um, just It's got some uh, black enamel on it. And then I've got the uh, actual um, stand here. Um, got some white enamel on it with its first coating. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try to spruce this thing up a little. So, um, starting to clean up these wires. It's time to start just getting stuff out of this box. Um, what I'm doing on these ones, these are limit switches. Uh, there's so much cable, it's not very quick to find out which one goes where. So, what I'm going to do is just create a label. So, for each one of these, there's only three. Oops. I just need to create um, a label corresponding to that number so that when I go to put it back together, I've got that information ready. Simply clipping these guys off, tagging them, and then throwing those wires to the side for now. I'll leave the other end connected to the breakout board itself. Um, that way it makes this nice and easy. So I'm just labeling them one through three. probably a better way to do this but this is how I'm doing it basically I want to get this damn box disconnected so I can separate this thing from the milling machine because as it sits right now I can't unload it individually it's connected to this um, good now I'm down to just the bare bones of the milling machine It'd come with a, a flood coolant tank and pump, which is pretty cool. Um, not sure if I'm going to use that or just go straight into using one of those fog busters, but um, we'll see. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the other modifications to bring this thing into uh, nice shape.